we need to try and survive. Okay. Dear mother and father, things have been really hard without you. Terrifying too. I wish I didn't have to spend my 13th birthday running for my life and watching it fall apart. Dear Gabriella, our son Octavian is doing great. He's turning 14 now. You missed a lot of what happened in the world. Dear best friend, I miss you a lot, but I cannot let the homie back. Salutations, my name is Solomon Belinsky, and I have received your aircraft with specific instructions within. I was placed in a vault with three other people by the United Nations on February 22nd, 2016, after the worldwide outbreak of zombies and the HCV virus. Only 20% of the world's population survived. You were part of that 80%. Now, we're trying to build up society again. We have developed a set of laws called ESCA enactment to keep our group civilized and under control. A group law is always stay in pairs of two. If not enforced, rations for one person is split among the two who disobeyed. Based on open skill and experience, every man, woman, child, youth, and other was placed into a category of food labor, hunting or gathering. Every morning, I go with the one other girl, Lexi, by law, to gather berries and nuts and any vegetation we can find. For resources, hunters must be 12 or older, and also trained. Everyone gets an equal food portion unless illnesses need to be treated. If caught stealing food, your proportion will be half it was before, for a month. For weapons, you are not allowed to use weapons to harm another group member, ever. Everyone needs to know when you take a weapon and what the weapon is, for safety reasons. Loss of weapon privileges or fingernails will be ripped off if people do not enforce the weapon laws. So the basic everyday laws in the, in the life we used to live, no stealing, Lying, murdering, or cheating. Six month training camp is required if these laws are unenforced. The money is spent well like so in this society. It's split into four main groups, defense, construction, education, and raw materials. The money will be spent in 30% for defense, 25% in construction, 25% in raw materials, and 20% in education due to the zombie apocalypse. Since we are about a month past the disaster, we have decided to lay out jobs for each member of the society above the working age. Here's the thing, during the actual zombie invasion, all of our power shut down and we were stripped of our technology until the aliens and exoplanet 51 Pegasi generously donated it to us. Our society leaders, had each person above working age take an assessment on careercruising.com to determine how we could help the most in the rebuilding of our world. My top five jobs fell into the clusters of art, marketing, and human services. You probably guessed it. All of my matches were creative. I got them. An advertising copywriter, like you, Dad. Direction of photography, set design, costume design and art direction. Like you, Mom. I guess that runs in our blood. They told me those jobs weren't helpful in our situation yet, so they had me focus on human services aspect of it. And I was matched with the art therapy career. I've been helping Lexi with her depression of her loss of her best friend through drawing and music, and she has been giving me counseling due to her match. We are really good at comforting each other. I like that a lot. My first friend that I made was Lexi, who I found while jumping into the vault. Her top jobs were psychiatric aid, child and youth worker, religious worker, community worker, and clergy. She would be the colony speaker since I think she would make a good speaker and motivator. Solomon is my last friend that I made while I met him in the vault. 
His results surprised me the most out of all of them. His top jobs were industrial engineer, mechanical engineer, technician, and naval architect, agriculture engineer, and environmental engineer. Solomon was a scientist who found a way to bring the dead back to life, but the government took his research and used it as a bioweapon. Solomon is a colony engineer and he teaches everyone else his roles. I'm the colony doctor, so I take care of everyone who is sick. Two job laws are jobs are determined by skill set and the jobs may be switched if agreed by each other. If you do not perform your daily task adequately enough, your food ration is lowered. My favorite part about the society system is its justice system section. We have a small group of judges and a counselor that we can sit and talk with about our problems. It reminds me of the times we would sit and talk about our feelings without fear. It felt nice to be understood again, even when I did something wrong. We're to locate the location of 51 Pegasus IB with characteristics such as luminosity, mass, temperature, and color. I've also received a document stating what our society consists of and the budget plan and how our systems of currency work. Being the scientist I am, it wasn't hard to come up with answers to these questions. The position of 51 Pegasi B is located 50.9 light years away in the constellation of Pegasus. The luminosity as well is 1.3 with a mass of 2.208 times 10 to the 30 power kilograms. The surface temperature is 5,571 degrees. Now, to know where we are, or when we are, we had to understand plan planetary rotation. All the planets orbit around the sun. We once thought the Earth was the center of our solar system, but it's actually the sun. Remember that day in science? You brought in your focal pendulum model and demonstrated the rotation of Earth. I like looking at the stars each night and the extraordinary areas of the solar system. There's so much wonder. I know there are the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. And there are the Jovians, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Terrestrial planets are small, Earth-like, ringless, warm, and solid, while Jovian planets are very large, stormy, gaseous, and have rings and many moons. The sun affects them in many ways. The closer the planet is to the sun, the hotter it is, and the farther, the colder. But the farther away the planet from the sun, the faster the orbital speed is. We can't always see this, and these planets, but we know they are there, just like you. Well. I also am studying a Big Bang Theory because of the so-called alien contact. I know that you always wanted to know how the universe started. That's what I'm going to tell you right now. The Big Bang Theory consists of a singularity violently expanding which started everything. It started time, space, matter. Before that, there was nothing. The Doppler shift is one piece of evidence that supports this theory. I'm amazed by it. If the line, spectral lines went to the blue, air, blue shift, the galaxy would be moving towards you. But if the spectral lines were moving to a red shift, the galaxies would be moving away from you. A second piece of evidence is something called the cosmic background radiation. I've heard of scientists hearing a certain noise or something. It also was a microwave length that travels through space that hits our atmosphere, it distorts oxygen and creates noise. It gets pretty confusing, but I know that the aliens will understand. There was one last thing that I grabbed before we all headed for the vault on the day that the zombies attacked. The Lord of the Flies. I remember that you told me what a brilliant work it was. Reading it again, it is a lot more significant in my life, because I can relate to the horror and understand the complex characters. I've noticed that the book had a constant theme of morality, civilization versus savagery, which is something that you are going to question when you lose almost everything. The greatest example of the gradual loss of morality was Roger. In the beginning of the novel, in chapter 4, when they were building their civilization, he was about to throw stones at the little ones, 
but the taboo of old life held him back. He still kept his morals and ethics and remembered them. But as time went on, Roger then took more pleasure in dangerously rolling rocks off of the cliff, which then led to barbarically slaughtering a pig with a stick, and in the end, personally murdering Piggy by crushing him with a boulder and torturing little ones with more than just stones. Ralph was a strong leader who was very focused on the basics for survival and rescue, which is common sense. As soon as he was elected leader, he tried to establish order and civilization. He was a symbol of and representative of morality. As Jack's bloodthirst deepened and the beast was born, it consumed his entire mindset. The more savage he became, the more boys listened to him and gave him power by fear. Ralph was replaced. He gave in too. They valued killing pigs and murder chants and power. But Piggy would have been an excellent leader because he was extremely intelligent. His glasses represented vision, not the literal kind. However, he was never respected by the boys, which shows to prove that some people value what's on the outside rather than the inside. Simon was a very admirable character. While he might not have been the best leader only because of his timidness, he represented truth, kindness, and goodness. He was the first and maybe only one to realize that the beast wasn't a physical monster on the island. He said it best, maybe the beast is just us. While it was originally an idea, he actually encountered a hallucination with the sow's head on a stick who said the beast wasn't something you could hunt and kill. When Simon was killed savagely by all of the boys together, that was when their whole civilization truly fell apart because Savage won and there was proof that hum human evil exists. This book taught me that humans are layered and complex and twisted when faced with a life or death situation. Jack represented savagery and what happens when there is no moral order. We cannot let evil win. When people get into fights, we need to remember what is important here. Harmony, civilization, and order. I hope this message is, a, is assisting your race for further advancement in solving the epidemic and saving your civilization. Peace be with you. I miss you every day. I still won't get over you. We had some pretty good days, but now they're over. So, Mom and Dad, I know you can't hear me. My breath is no longer in your lungs, but your spirit still brings me breath and life. Eska will not only survive, it will thrive. We'll look out for each other. Because we believe in hope. I love you.